I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. I don't have my eyes! I didn't miss about anything! Not once, not one time! Ah, Catwoman, my old nemesis. I knew this day would come. The day I would finally have to look you in the eye and talk about you. You guys wouldn't know this, but over the past few years, I have attempted to watch Catwoman for a second time. I saw the film originally back in 2004 when it came out. Ever since I started talking about movies on this platform, I knew that one day I would probably have to talk about Catwoman. I have old notebooks filled with notes of me attempting to watch the film and only getting like 20 minutes in or a half an hour in and giving up. But I'll tell you what, quarantine does some fucked up things to you. It makes you want to try things. Things you've never done before. Like do a hilariosity review of Catwoman. Since Black Widow was going to come out this weekend, but was pushed back, I decided to talk about Elektra, which I've already reviewed, and now we're going to talk about Catwoman. A film that's often grouped together with Elektra on worst lists of comic book movies. I'll tell you what, this movie makes Elektra look like a goddamn masterpiece. As you probably know, this film gave Halle Berry a Razzie Award for Worst Actor, and she was cool enough to accept it in person. First of all, I want to thank Warner Brothers. <laughs> Thank you for putting me in a piece of shit god-awful movie. It was directed by Pitoff. Normally I look up how to pronounce names when I'm not entirely sure, but in this case, I just don't give a shit. What is it with directors who give themselves music video names like Chaos, who made Ballistic X vs. Sever, or Mick G, who's made some horrific movies and a couple okay movies. The film begins with an opening credit sequence that's filled with old pictures of cats, including an article about cat mummies! And like all great movies, our first introduction to our protagonist is through voiceover. It all started on the day that I died. If there had been an obituary, it would have described the unremarkable life of an unremarkable woman survived by no one but there was no obituary because the day that i died was also the day i started to live but that comes later this voiceover never returns <laughs> i'm not kidding the the, the voiceover never returns who is she talking to us I, I i think this this opening she is actually speaking directly to the audience because we don't understand catwoman yet and we need to be told that Catwoman will soon become Catwoman. Mm. We're soon introduced to the world of Patience Phillips, played by Halle Berry. She's not playing Selena Kyle, she's playing Patience Phillips, a graphic designer for a makeup company. And they're about to debut their fabulous new age-reversing makeup. Every time I ever thought about a Catwoman solo movie, I always thought, what if she was a graphic designer working for a makeup conglomerate? So Patience is desperately trying to make a good impression on her domineering asshole boss with her graphic design skills. Wow, I'm so invested. While she's at home, a cat comes to her window and then jumps 10 feet up in the air to another ledge. And for whatever reason, Patience decides that she should go out and save this cat that is obviously a lot more agile than her. She nearly dies. But then Benjamin Bratt, as a super cop, comes in and saves her life. She's obviously immediately smitten with this man, and so it's a good thing that she dropped her wallet for him to find and track her down in a very creepy scene we'll soon talk about. Sharon Stone is in the film as well. She plays the face of this makeup company that's about to be replaced by a younger model. And her shock at this is alarming. What a great superficial character that I totally like and understand and can relate to. An older woman who has discovered that she is no longer young. And is it just me or is every close-up shot of her in this film airbrushed? I'd like to talk about the friends that Patience Phillips has at this makeup conglomerate. Hey, man sandwich, 12 o'clock. Oh my God. <laughs> And then we have her extremely perverted friend, who spends the entire movie doing nothing but talking about Benjamin Bratt and his hotness. Detective Long. Tom. Oh. God, that is such a good name. 
Tom Lone. Rhymes with cone, phone, bone. She's the most annoying character in this entire movie, without exaggeration. Every time she's in a scene, it is to talk about either patience and her love life, or her own love life, what she wished she had going on in her love life, and usually it's about some guy that she really wants to bone, and that's her fucking character. It's, um... Well, it's, it's great writing. I love it. So the cop shows up at her workplace because she dropped her ID. And why is Halle Berry acting like she's never been asked out by a cop who tracked her down to her workplace in front of her friends and made a big show of asking her out on a date? Actually, yeah, that is fucking weird. But seriously, Halle Berry not being used to getting attention from guys is fucking hilarious. She's one of the most gorgeous women on the planet. But the film really starts to pick up speed when she goes back to this makeup agency in the middle of the night to turn in some work she's tried to save her job. And she overhears the people who know about this new makeup line that they're launching talking about its deadly side effects. That's right, if, if you stop using this new makeup, you'll basically die. Your face will fucking fall apart. Your skin will just melt off your face. And that, my friends, is the plot of Catwoman. <sighs> but Patience makes some noise, and so they go after her and try to kill her. And how is she casting a shadow right now? Where is the light coming from behind her while she stands in front of these boxes? So they start trying to kill her, and eventually she gets trapped in a sewer pipe, and they blow her out of that pipe by turning on the water pressure. She's rescued by a CGI cat whose mouth we go inside of. That's probably somebody's fetish. So the cat walks up Halle Berry's leg like it's crawling up Pride Rock, and the music really wants us to think that this is just amazing. The cat breathes some kind of mist into Halle Berry, and her eyes actually change to a cat's for a second. And then she wakes up, and we get our first look at what being Catwoman might actually be like. Like having the abilities that Catwoman has. And it seems like a goddamn psychological nightmare. would be fucking traumatizing. She leaps up her balcony and breaks into her own house and her really creepy friend calls her again, droning on and on about Benjamin Bratt's fucking body. Patience Phillips, I have never been so proud of you. You're probably sipping your decaf soy, whatever right now, fantasizing about licking the foam off his lips. Oh wait, that's what I'm doing. At this point in the film, I became aware of CGI establishing shots. Pitoff loves his goddamn CGI establishing shots. Zooming all around the fucking city into a building that's a reflection and then you're in the house through the reflect. Fuck off! It's a goddamn exterior shot! God! Woman. So Patience goes to the house of the cat lady of all cat ladies, and she throws something at her. I'm always here. Catnip. It's a good thing that she's actually Catwoman, because like if she caught the catnip and was like, what the fuck? You're disgusting then it would be like really awkward. <laughs> throw catnip at people. Oh, hi, welcome to my house. <laughs> catnip! Another side effect of being Catwoman is that you apparently lose all sense of yourself. You forget your humanity. You, you say uncontrollable things. You just lash out. You, you have no control over yourself anymore, which is wonderful. Being Catwoman is gonna be amazing. You see a spider, you fucking freak out, you crawl all over the ground, you see fish, you must eat it, and you get yourself fired because she tells off her boss 
and the entire place starts clapping for her. Wait! Mr. Adair! I didn't mean it. Did I? My hero. <laughs> Seriously though, is part of having a cat's abilities not being able to control your emotions? I thought cats were supposed to be unusually smart animals. So her friend who is using that makeup faints in the middle of the street and she ends up in a hospital. Guess what she wants to talk about as soon as she wakes up. Hey Upside, you gotta see my doctor. Okay, I can see you're feeling better. It reminds me, what's up with the hot yet modest, but who cares because he's so hot detective. God, I really don't like this film. But Patience would really like to find this cop because she obviously likes him and he likes her and so she shows up at a school where he is giving a lecture to students. Which uh, is a little weird today. Can I see your gun? No. You know what makes somebody... Will you shoot it? No. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> school and guns and kids and funny. Then all of a sudden, one of the most embarrassing, cringe-worthy scenes in the film happens. It's basically a 90s music video from like a Eurodance group. You know, sometimes you see things and, and you have to actually visualize them creating it. Everyone on that set, even the goddamn kids, must have known this is dumb. This is stupid. Why are we doing this? Oh, that's right. The money. Fucking. Now she's eating cat food or sardines or something, prancing around her apartment, and I'd say right about now I would really start to question exactly what is going on in my life. Like, will she have to use a litter box from now on? That's the real question that the film doesn't care to answer, but just imagine a scene where Benjamin Bratt like walks in and she's like, oh, don't look, don't look, and she's just squatting over a litter box. That would be an A plus movie. So her annoying neighbors will not turn off their loud music. So she breaks in, hops on a table and uses a spray nozzle like a whip and breaks their speakers. And then she goes full Edward Scissorhands on her hair and takes a motorcycle, I guess. It's a good thing she just had the keys. I don't really know how she did that, but it doesn't really matter. Because now we get to observe Pitoff's idea of cinematography. <sighs> My god, she hasn't even got her full costume yet. This is gonna be a long ass video. <laughs> so she foils a robbery and we get some of our first looks at the horrific Catwoman CGI body. I absolutely hate the music choices and literally everything about this scene. <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer did it better. Meow. Speaking of Michelle Pfeiffer, there's a little cameo in this movie, sort of. She's a fucking photo on the ground, so that's great. I'm glad that they put that photo there. So she wakes up the following morning and realizes that she took all the gems home with her, and so she returns them along with cupcakes and a note that says sorry, which is sort of like a cup she gave to Benjamin Bratt earlier that also said sorry. What a terrible fucking idea. What a very easy way to implicate yourself as this person. But that's okay, it doesn't matter. 
nothing matters, life is futile. <laughs> and of course, all great superhero films are not complete without a web search about the history of cats. What the fuck is it with cats? Why are cat movies so fucking bad? Cats. Cats are cool in real life, right? We like cats. Why can't anyone make a good cat movie? That's my challenge to you, Hollywood. Make a good cat movie. So she goes back to the mystical cat lady looking for answers, and we reveal that that cat was actually just testing her to see if she was worthy of the gift of being Catwoman. But you will experience a freedom other women will never know. You are a Catwoman. Hey, she said it! She said the movie's title! In the following scene, she magically has her full Catwoman outfit, complete with open-toed shoes, what all combat experts wear. We get a full 360 view of her body and the outfit, and the most obvious CGI Halle Berry leaping around the city. I just don't fucking believe any of this. Next, she goes to a club and orders cream from a bar. Hey, Catwoman writer, what are you writing? Oh, I'm just writing the part where Catwoman orders cream. <laughs> wow, great idea. I'm gonna put a scene where she wants to eat the catnip. Oh yes, that's a good one. Yes, we're professional writers. We get paid money to write Catwoman. <laughs> So she starts dancing and putting on a show to get the attention of the guy who killed her before. And she attacks the guy and she's like, I'm Catwoman. <laughs> at the very least, the movie is actually starting to get pretty entertaining at this point. Once she suits up, like it's absurdly stupid and you can look at it and watch it and kind of laugh at it. I talk a lot of shit. But this movie can be very entertaining amongst the right people. And the movie gives us what we really need, what we've really been wanting the whole time. A romantic scene on a Ferris wheel that leads to a daring rescue. So Catwoman hunts down her asshole boss that fired her and the police show up and what proceeds is another awkward, sexually charged dance routine. But that's okay, cause she purrs in Benjamin Bratt's ear. <laughs> I won't lie, if Halle Berry purred in my ear, there would be some... <sighs> but here's where we reveal the true miracle of this new makeup line. Sharon Stone insults, rightfully so, her asshole husband, and he, being the prick he is, decides he's going to hit her. But... Her, um, her makeup that she's been wearing, this, this age-reversing powerful makeup, has turned her face rock solid. So she can't actually experience pain because of the special makeup that she's... <laughs> and next we get another date scene. Is this a romantic comedy? Is Catwoman a romantic com- It's what it is! They just, they make out, they go on dates. It's a fucking romance movie. And then it rains. And because Catwoman, she doesn't like rain, she fucking flips out and they make out again and then they fuck. If this movie had any balls, they would show what she's like at that point too. Like what? <laughs> if Catwoman no longer wants to sleep in a bed and she wants to sleep on a shelf and she wants to eat all the fish and she hates rain and she can sense all this crazy shit, what is she like when she fucks? So she gets a call from Sharon Stone and there's somehow a video feed before she answers the call? What is this, fucking Minority Report? Who is this for? To remind us who Sharon Stone is? To remind us that the voice is Sharon- is Fuck you, movie! So Sharon Stone reveals herself to be the true mastermind behind this evil makeup plan. She frames Catwoman for her husband's murder. Would you like to know what her motivation is? I was everything they wanted me to be. I was never more beautiful. Never more powerful. And then I turned 40 and they threw me away. She turned 40. She turned. 
turn 40. She turned 40. <laughs> she turned 40. <laughs> hmm. You know she turned 40. Yeah. <sighs> so the cop brings patience in because he suspects she's involved somehow, and now he knows she's Catwoman, and she has to convince him about the evil makeup empire that's going to kill women across the world. She then slips through the bars of a jail cell because I guess she is a cat, and a great CGI escape happens. So eventually the cop decides to trust Catwoman, and she tracks down Sharon Stone, and here we go with our big third act. Finally. You know how Halle Berry gets a lot of hate for this movie because she's the star? She is not the worst part of this movie, without a doubt. It's Sharon Stone. She gives a truly atrocious performance. Amateur. Not worthy of the big screen. I don't usually like to talk about actors, but this performance screams of a prima donna who as soon as they yell cut, she screams for an assistant to bring her a fucking latte. I hate her in this movie. She is real fucking bad. So one of the most laughable final fights in a comic book movie begins with more great music. But Catwoman is really having a hard time because Sharon Stone's makeup has turned her into like a brick and so she can't hurt her. This is the true conflict of the film. Honestly, just look at Sharon Stone's reaction shots here. This, again, just seems like an actor incapable of doing these scenes for real. It's mind-bogglingly sad. While she's hanging for dear life, she catches her reflection in the glass and realizes that her skin isn't perfect and it scares her so much that she falls to her death. Help me! <laughs> and her creepy purr friend is apparently dating her doctor now, so I guess that's like her arc. Then she writes a letter to the cop saying she doesn't want to be with him anymore. She cracks her whip and walks towards the full moon, which has been full a lot over the course of many different nights in this film, I must add. And that's Catwoman. Easily top five worst comic book movies of all time, maybe top two. All I really have to say is that just one year later, Batman Begins came out. Look at the contrast. <laughs> One year. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching this Hilariosity review. I'm glad that I was finally able to talk about Catwoman. It took a while. You guys didn't know this, but I really tried to review this movie multiple times and I could just not get through it again. I saw it back when it came out and I was like, never again. But you know, some things are worth revisiting. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.